Now, you may doubt me when I tell you this, but I am a sorority girl through and through. I mean, I loved it. Being in a sorority meant that I never had to spend time alone. And living in the house meant that there were always lots of fun girls to hang out with. But I liked Jenny the best. I mean, right from the start, we hit it off. I mean, even the way that we used to greet each other, using lines from the beginning of a Janet Jackson song, she would say, yes, honey, I love him, he is fine, he does a lot of nice things for me. And I'd come back with, I know he used to do nice stuff for you, but what has he done for you lately? <laughs> we would meet on campus for lunch every day, and sometimes we'd go for rides on my scooter in the countryside. Jenny would sit on the back with her arms wrapped around my waist and sing the entire Madonna True Blue album closely into my ear. <laughs> I'm so excited because you're my best friend. We were inseparable and we loved each other. The way that all sorority girls really, really love each other. <laughs> and it was normal. Except with Jenny, it didn't feel normal. <laughs> it felt consuming and wonderful and maybe gay. <laughs> I didn't know. I had never dated. What did romantic love feel like? What was the difference between theta tau omega love and mom and dad love? I knew one thing though. I knew I needed to keep it to myself. There was this kid in my high school who everyone called a fag until he had to transfer schools. I used to think about how lonely he must be. So no, I had made it all the way through high school to the coolest sorority on campus, and I wasn't about to blow this. But Jenny, she wasn't making that easy. She called me Snickers, I guess because she thought I was sweet. And she was always doing things to make me wonder. Like, especially this one time. We were on a road trip, and we were coming back, and it was late, and everyone in the car was sleeping. Jenny was sitting in the front seat playing DJ, and I was sitting in the seat right behind her. She put on Elton John's Tiny Dancer, which was one of our favorite songs. A and then I saw her hand come around the seat with her palm open, open wide. And I grabbed it. And we held hands like that in the dark the entire drive back, listening to Elton. And it was just... <sighs> After graduation, I moved back home, and so did Jenny. And about a year later, when I called to tell, tell her that I was moving to DC, she immediately screamed, I'm coming with you. Uh, really? I mean, I mean, that's awesome. But when I hung up the phone, I got this tight feeling in my chest. We'd be living together again, but this time alone together. Well, we got an apartment and we started our real lives and it was great. I mean, every night we'd make dinner and we'd sit on the couch and watch Who's the Boss? And then on the weekend, we'd, we'd splurge, and we'd order pizza and go out and sing karaoke. And, and when it became time to go to sleep, we'd each go into our separate rooms. And as the apartment became quiet, I would lay awake with my heart pounding in this thin space between joy and pain. This feeling, this, this must be what all the songs and the movies are all about. This must be real love. Shit! <laughs> Shit! Now, I know what you're thinking, but I still didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, all I knew was that I loved Jenny, but that didn't necessarily mean I was gay. I mean, maybe all straight people feel this way and they just don't talk about it. I mean, no, I mean, there was a chance, right, that I just needed to meet the right guy, and then Jenny would marry his best friend or, or his brother, and we'd live next door to each other and, and have play dates with the kids and go out on the weekends and still be together. I loved my life with Jenny, and I didn't want it to end. It was perfect until Jenny brought Max home. Yeah. <laughs> Max was this guy she knew from high school, and I guess the two of them had reconnected, and he started to come visit a lot. And this one weekend, they came into the kitchen, and, and I heard her say, Snickers. And naturally, I thought she was talking to me, and I turned around, and I saw her. She jumped up on his back, and she was laughing, and I couldn't breathe. My face got hot, and I felt sick to my stomach. Everything changed after that. I mean, she stopped calling me at work during the day, and she started to take her dinner into her room every night with the phone. 
And then she started to spend all her weekends in Pennsylvania with him, sometimes leaving on Thursday and not coming back until Friday. I mean, until Sunday. I mean, it was like we weren't even friends anymore, and I was alone for the first time in my life. So every weekend, I'd come home to an empty apartment and get a six-pack, order a pizza, and just watch TV. Well, this one weekend, I was flipping channels, and I landed on QVC. <laughs> Karaoke in your own home? I mean, it was this really cool multi-gazette boombox. Jenny would love this. I imagine the two of us, MCs for the night, like just back in the sorority days. Well, the sh machine arrived the following Friday. I, I got a six-pack, I ordered a pizza. It didn't really look the way that it did on television. I was made of cheap plastic, but I brought in my standing mirror and set it up so I could see myself. Now, the music was kind of odd, and there were these background singers who I felt were drowning me out, so I, I had to sing louder. I was into my fifth beer and 12th song when I heard the pounding on the door. Boom, 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 and I just froze. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, I couldn't pretend I wasn't home. So, so I answered it. It was the scary guy from downstairs. You woke up my goddamn baby. My eyes filled up with tears, and I tried to speak, but I didn't know what to say. I wanted to say that I was lonely, and that Jenny was calling some guy Snickers, and that Snickers was what she used to call me, and that I thought she loved me the way that I loved her, but I was wrong. Then I saw his eyes go, around the corner, around me, to the room behind me. I mean, <laughs> there was no time to hide the evidence. The, the empty beer bottles, the pizza box, the stand-up mirror, my torn t-shirt, black eyeliner, and faux hawk I had created from a whole can of mousse. <laughs> I promised to be quiet and close the door. Jenny came home late Sunday night. She barely said hello, and she went straight to her room. And as the apartment got quiet, I laid there thinking. I was in love with Jenny, and Jenny was probably in love with Max. And the karaoke machine, that was stupid. <laughs> it wasn't long before the news came. Jenny wanted out of the lease. She was moving back to Pennsylvania to be with Max. I had to pack up my things and move into my sister's basement in Virginia. It only took a few months of being lonely before I got up the nerve to walk down that dark alley that led to the door of the hung jury. The room was dark and full of women, uh, like hanging out in groups at the bar. Over in the corner, I saw Peppermint Patty helping Marcy with her next shot. And then I saw Joe from Facts of Life and Alice from the Brady Bunch make a dance sandwich out of someone who looked just like my high school field hockey coach. And just as I brought my beer to my lips, I got bumped by Thelma as she gave Louise a high five. <laughs> the rest of the room was full of women who looked a lot like me. I wasn't going to be alone. You see, it turns out there's a sorority for everybody. 